Um, 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 I know nothing about meningitis. Is that the one with the red spots on the arm? Stiff neck. Clammy and faint. Achy. A lot of the symptoms have sort of been hung over. I know you can't look at light, is that right? I think students as a whole don't have an awful lot of, of awareness of, of meningitis. I think, you know, students are like, they, they care about something when it's in their face. Maybe if it was more close to home, we might think about it. I knew meningitis was a very um, serious disease. I wasn't actually aware that it was, it was so serious amongst students. You just never think it happened to any of your friends at all, or you'd ever be in that situation when you have to test somebody for it. One morning, uh, I, I woke up, went to lectures as usual, felt absolutely fine, and um, started to feel a bit ill. We were coming over lecture, and I was asking him if he was going to play football, and I said no. Feeling a bit groggy, and I was going to go home and try and sleep it off. I can remember my body just feeling very, very cold and uh, you know, wanting to really get back to the hall's residence, you know, get up against the radiator and, uh, and have a hot shower. I remember having this awful headache which got worse and worse and it ended up, it really just absolutely split, splitting my head really. It was, um, it was really very painful. It did feel like being drunk in, in a way, you know, it got steadily worse and worse and it was, it was hard to sort of do basic um, tasks. I don't think I left my room at all on the, on the Wednesday. When I first realised something was wrong with Tom, like really wrong with Tom, was when I went to see him on the Wednesday night. I'd been to see the boys and they told me that he was ill. I can remember Robin distinctly saying, oh, Tom's in his room, he's got flu at worst. She decided to check on him. He came out, knocked on his door. And so I was banging on his door and I could hear him in his room and he was just shuffling about and I just thought he was ignoring me. She kept banging on the door until I got up because I wasn't really talking properly through the door. And it was when he opened his door, really, that I realised something was really wrong. Didn't know his name, couldn't tell us what day it was. He just seemed, seemed drunk. It really did look terrible. It was like a really, like, grey, greeny colour. I'd never seen anyone's skin colour like that before. And he just looked like nothing like the real Tom that I know. Robin didn't even notice the rash. I don't understand how, because it was all over him. At the side of his bed was a pint glass, so I went and put it on his arm, and it didn't go down. And you never, ever think that you're going to find someone with meningitis. I didn't feel a thing, it was just like do this and do this and do this and just make sure Tom's okay. So I was just like ring an ambulance and just do that, just take e each step at a time. Hello ambulance. Hi, please can I have an ambulance in Bowsden Court in South Gosford please? I think my friend might have got meningitis or something seriously wrong with him. They um, brought me into the kitchen and sat me in front of the television just trying to keep me focused, uh, watching The Weakest Link, actually. And he never watches The Weakest Link, ever. And he was just staring at it. It was a particularly good episode, I guess, but I was very into it. I received a job to my telefix, which is my computer screen, that tells me the jobs for um, an ear response, uh, which is classified as a life-threatening emergency. When the paramedic arrived, um, I just felt, like, relief. He looked very, very unwell. He was very, very pale. He, he was just very blank, staring at the television, not really responding. And then when she came, she like just asked me the symptoms, looked, like took a look at him, and was just like, right, I think it's meningitis. They they immediately, you know, gave me like, antibiotics. I think, and there's no doubt that I think those drugs that they gave me there really saved my life. And then we got to the hospital, and they took him straight in, like through the patient's entrance, and I had to go like walk through and speak to the receptionist about his date of birth. And then I just sat in, in the waiting room and then I got really upset because I was like by myself in a hospital and Tom was really ill. It wasn't really until I was in hospital in, in A&E and there were doctors panicking and stuff and telling me what was wrong with me. I was, I was in this hospital bed feeling really, really ill that I, I thought, yeah, I'm in I'm quite big trouble here. The doctor had said that if we'd have found him an hour later, he would have like died basically. And that's a really scary thought that if I, I hadn't gone and checked on him, it could have been dead. In the case of Kate and Tom, we saw how Kate helped uh, Tom through his illness and was able to notify uh, the ambulance uh, very early on. The symptoms of meningococcal disease can include a high fever, headache, vomiting, neck stiffness, a fear of bright lights, and also cold hands and feet and a rash. If you press a tumbler against the rash, it doesn't blanch or the redness doesn't fade and that is a very useful indication that this is meningococcal disease. If you or any of your friends recognize any of these symptoms then seek medical attention immediately.
there is a vaccine available for meningitis C. Now meningitis C is one of several groups of meningococcal disease that can be prevented. People living in residential accommodation, such as students' halls of residence, are more susceptible to getting this disease. I think the most important thing to, to come out of this whole thing is, is the importance of, of your friends checking up on, on you when you're ill. People that I know that have heard the story and stuff, they're really like really more aware of the symptoms now and not just to let people be if they're ill and to check if they're alright. It's kind of like united people in a sense. We were sat in um, a bar somewhere and he was like, let me get you a drink and I was like, no, 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 it's fine, I'll get it myself. And he was like, Kate, seriously, he's like, honestly, without you, I would not be here and you did save my life, basically. He was like, and that's when it really hit me because like, to have it be said from him is totally different from someone else and it was just like, all right then, I just, I don't know, it, like, it really touched me because like, I really don't, I still don't regard myself as a lifesaver at all. I do like to, you know, occasionally just say how grateful I am, you know, because I am really, of course, very grateful so my whole family um, about what she did so you know sure I mean um, if we're out and about you know I'll buy a drink or, or two you know because uh, you know she deserves it.